my brake system thing came on. This is my spot for the night. It's just a trailhead actually over here in Breckenridge. It really starts to take a toll on me because I'm used to being in places like this. We're in the Rockies. Oh, it's so exciting. I always monitor my little gauge right here. 221 is my engine temperature using 80% load. I'm about an hour away from the town that I'm going to. Oh, the mountains, it's so beautiful. We gotta climb this steep, steep uh, mountain pass here. And actually get over, so we're going a little slower than other people around here. I just love it. Love the Rockies. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm still climbing, still climbing. Engine temperature's doing good. 222.8. Can't imagine going down this thing. And you're close into Denver over here. See all the trucks are off to the side so that, you know, when you're going slower, you want to make sure you're kind of out of the way of traffic and uh, people can get by you. So they go a little bit slower than I do. I'm going to go ahead and get over so I can let people get past me. Check it out, guys. Oh my gosh, look at that. Such a beautiful sight. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so glad to be here. Ugh. Sorry, my voice is trash for some reason. I think it's just drier and driving so much and probably not drinking enough water. I can smell my coolant overflowing. Climbing those mountains, it gets pretty heated. Eisenhower Tunnel, 1973. brake system thing came on telling me that my, I'm having an issue with my brakes but what it really is is that I'm on such steep inclines that it thinks I don't have any braking fluid. This happens all the time when I go on these steep inclines which is a little nerve-wracking when you're on something like this. Um, so I've got it in third gear right now. It's a 7% grade and it says trucks at 35 miles per hour. I could probably go faster, but I like to take it slow. These things freak me out a little bit, you know, because there's so many people and so many cars and having to brake quickly. I don't want to burn my brakes out going down the mountainside. Yeah, I'm in my happy place. I am in my happy place. This is amazing. Wow. This is my spot for the night. It's just a trailhead actually over here in Breckenridge but it's beautiful. So in the morning, I'm gonna actually rest tonight and maybe one day tomorrow get acclimated. Well, like, what are you doing up? <laughs> this is waking me up. Uh, it's time to get up. Oh my goodness. Look at that view. Oh, I could hear the water rushing. It's so amazing. We're in Colorado. I'm so glad we're back here. Billy, are you glad we're back? You glad? You glad we're back? What do you think, Mama? Huh? Mm hmm. Billy? Don't go aside. Don't go aside. <laughs> In one of my last videos, I told you I had a huge change of plans. I had planned on being on the East Coast most of the year, but then all of a sudden, I jetted to Colorado in two days so that I could get back to my happy place. More to come on that. While I really love Breckenridge, I wanted to get to a place where I could rest and camp for the next couple of weeks in one spot. 
The trailhead was just a temporary stopover for one night and not a place that you can really camp at. So off to Leadville we go, which is less than an hour away and is at a very high 10,000 feet in elevation. I don't like going this fast up into elevation because I sometimes have trouble acclimating that quickly. I lucked out on the camping spot I found in Leadville and was presented with the most beautiful and welcoming sunset and was such a perfect end to the evening and the long drive from the East Coast. I am grateful. Good morning, Lily. It's beautiful outside, huh? Oh, look at that scenery. We're in Colorado. Oh, Lily girl. You like it, don't you, Mama? Well, hello, Story Chasers. <laughs> I am not on the East Coast anymore, if you can't tell. <laughs> yeah, so as I was showing you before, I moved all the way over here to Colorado from the East Coast, and I'm loving it here, guys. It is so amazing to be back here on BLM land and enjoying nature. Like, isn't this beautiful over here? I've got the mountains behind me, which you can't see really well right now. I've got the mountains and all of this beautiful land. See, so I have my RV over there. My solar panels are out. My mat. My grill is out. I haven't been able to bring these things out in a long time since I left the West Coast. So I have my grill out attached to the propane cylinder underneath the van. I took my bike off and got some biking done, which is just covered up right over there by the trees. And then my chair and a table. It's just beautiful here. I love it. It's so good to be back here. And you can see the mountains right over there. Just a little bit, it's a little bit of cloud cover. But it is beautiful here, guys. I oh, love it. One of the things I love too is being able to pull out this chair. This is my rocking chair. <laughs> I bought this back when I was uh, in Key West, Florida, and haven't really been able to get it out since I've been on the East Coast because, well, I was just urban camping a lot. So it just feels so good, guys, to be out here in nature again. And uh, it just feels good to my soul. It was a, you know, there's a lot of great things on the East Coast. Don't get me wrong, I loved it there. But it was challenging in some ways for me. The heat, the humidity, a lot of people, a lot of noise, and I was urban camping quite a bit. And so it really starts to take a toll on me because I'm used to being in places like this and being able to really just relax and, you know, spread out a little bit and get out all of my toys, you know, to camp and explore the area. And yeah, just really loving it. So and kind of get rid of some of that anxiety that I was dealing with when I was over there. It wasn't horrible, it was just low level anxiety, but it was enough where I just didn't feel super happy anymore and, and wanted to get back out here to probably something I was a little bit more comfortable with and just nature, it's my preference, I just love it. I love it here and I love what it has to offer and not having to move around so much and you know, I'm not a huge fan of campgrounds as you know. <laughs> and uh, not staying in campgrounds and you know, just being out here by myself and hanging out and really kind of relaxing. So as part of the introversion in me is being able to recharge on my own and not be around people, but it's all good. It's so beautiful here. This is the current state of affairs. <laughs> Lily's just, uh laying in my arms while we're rocking in the chair with this beautiful view out here. It's so peaceful. I love it. There's the RV. I'm gonna have this whole campsite to myself. The road is somewhere beyond there, but I'm not by a lot of people at all. There's no campsites over here right around me at all. I lucked out on this one. It's a good spot. Ooh. That had some air in it from going out of sea level to here. Just gonna marinate the chicken, some olive oil, a little bit of 
Worcestershire. Maybe a lot of Worcestershire. And then I put in some Montreal chicken seasoning. Good. And then just smush it around. So you guys want to see behind the scenes? So here's this gorgeous meal that I just made. Chicken, kale and mushrooms, and little red potatoes. Here's the behind the scenes. I've got my light that I have to move around to constantly put light on the food. Here's my mess over here of <laughs> everything. All right, there's the secondary mess. I've got towels, instant pot, Lily over there. <laughs> Hi, Lily. Oh, my, my stuff is just over here. It's a hot mess. Of course, we have our grill out here. And you see that little tin right there. That's to keep the mosquitoes away. <laughs> there are mosquitoes here in Colorado. Also, I wanted to show you guys some a few things that are happening here. So one, you might have noticed. That is not sunlight on my hair. <laughs> that is all my grays coming out in full force. <laughs> this is what, I think three months now? My hair grows slow, so it's gonna take forever for this to grow out. But I wanted to show you too, my new shirt. So I've been telling you guys that I was gonna be doing some branding shirts, because you guys have been asking me a lot for it. I finally got it all together. <sighs> Whew. I'm still dealing with the altitude here, hold on. I'm gonna show you. So this is one thing that I have to do, is I have to get oxygen 
because I'm at such a high altitude right now that I get winded just walking. And I know I'm out of shape, but come on, not that much. So the oxygen really helps. I'm still getting acclimated to it. It always takes me a little bit of time to acclimate to the altitude here in Colorado. So anyways, okay, so I have the shirts. Um, let me show you another one that I have. So here's another shirt. It's the blue shirt with the blue original red and blue logo. And I also have this cute little water bottle. I love this thing. It's 17 ounces, it's perfect. So I'm selling all kinds of things on there from stickers to shirts to water bottles, mugs. Here's the stickers that I just stuck on a water bottle. Um, I have hats are coming. I don't have those yet. I didn't like the ones this vendor had, so I'm gonna find something else. So it's a work in progress still for the hats because you know how I love hats. And oh, I have canvas bags on there. All kinds of really cool stuff. So if you're interested in purchasing any of those, you can click the link below or just go to storychasing.com backslash shop. You'll find all of the cool t-shirts and things there to purchase. Thank you so much to everybody who has already purchased and to everybody who purchases in the future because doing things like that really helps support the Story Chasing channel and to keep it going and give you guys all of this free content that hopefully you're enjoying. lovely morning outside. Just another day in paradise. <laughs> oh, I've got my coffee and my oatmeal. It's one of my favorite breakfast foods. Yeah. Mm. I tell you what, one of the things that I love about being out here too is that I eat better because <laughs> I cook more when I'm boondocking, clearly because I'm not by restaurants. And it just feels better, you know? I'm actually losing weight again. I still have two spoons in here. <laughs> it was from when I was mixing the honey. because so I use one spoon for honey, one spoon for the coconut oil to put in here. I guess I'm just gonna have to have two spoons in there. It's a little windy, so I have to keep moving my hair. The cool thing is that I just don't eat out a lot, obviously, when I'm boondocking. There are places um, probably about 30 minutes away that I could go to, but uh, I'm not gonna drive 30 minutes to go to a restaurant. So I just stocked up on food before I came here and been eating nice and healthy and yeah, it feels good. I'm already losing weight more again. That's what happens when you eat out too much, at least for me. Mm. This is what I miss, you know? It's just so peaceful. There's just nothing like being out here in nature. It just really gets me right here, you know, in the heart. I love it. It's so peaceful and I feel more relaxed and settled and... I mean, think about it, you know? A lot of you guys are, you know, I'm sure are wondering why did I have anxiety on the east coast um like i said before it wasn't like severe anxiety you know where i was gonna have a panic attack or anything like that it was just that i felt very uncomfortable and not at peace and happy in a lot of places because i was doing so much parking lot camping and urban camping and that's just not fun you know to do that all the time at least for me um it has its time and place but not for what four and a half months <laughs> and I was in a couple of campgrounds but not that many so yeah a lot of a lot of parking lot camping and just some beach camping you know in Florida that was nice too being able to pull my chair out so this you know story time <laughs> is one of my favorite things to do in the morning is to sit out in my chair in the morning and look out at the nature and have breakfast and coffee and 
I think that stems from when I was a kid. We always, the house that we always had in Texas typically had a nice backyard and a pool and we had a rocking chair, you know, chairs for us to come and sit out and just enjoy. You know, I know it wasn't like necessarily nature per se, it was the back of our house, but it was still beautiful. It was outside and we had the pool, the water, the we had trees and grass and all that. It was just so amazing to sit out there and enjoy nature and talk with my sisters and you know, it was just a really enjoyable time. I'm here by myself right now, so there's nobody to really talk to you, but you know, when I am camping with people, we sit out here and do this too. And uh, it's just a, such a peaceful pastime for me. So I really enjoy mornings like this. It just feels good to the soul, you know? Breathe in some fresh air, have a bite to eat, some coffee to get you going through the day. I love it. it feels all the senses, you know? What is your favorite time or your favorite ritual that you like to perform that gives you peace and happiness? I'd love to hear from you about that. It's always interesting to me to hear how people fill themselves up with peace and happiness. So leave me a comment below and let me know. Come here, girl.